nicely and politely here. I'm I'm Tom Bergley. I'm from uh, originally from originally from Norway. Uh, moved here a few years ago, and um, well, permanently about five years ago. And I've been working uh, a lot with uh, graphic design and teaching. Um, uh, a lot of Adobe programs actually for core centers. I was building my my own core center, and uh, it's still kind of in existence. But uh, since I now was uh, more or less headhunted to this uh, translator job for a large uh, computer company here in Austin, I work as a uh, it's called a linguistic QA specialist. This sounds very very nice. We need time. My lingual, basically, and and I, and I test uh, apps and and uh, programs. The translations into Norwegian are correct you know, from English, so that is very cool. And uh, I got that job in November last year, and uh, so I haven't been doing a lot of marketing on my core center. But my background is from newspaper production mainly. Uh, I'm teaching Photoshop, Illustrator, Acrobat, but InDesign is like my little baby and that I'm, uh, well, my little babies are right here on the screen, actually. It's a little, mm -hmm. little crazy dog and the even more crazy little cat. But, um, but uh, InDesign is my favorite tool. I, uh, I, um, I, I, I understand like somebody mentioned uh, that these programs are like uh, bottomless when it comes to functionality. And I, I subscribe to like a weekly uh, InDesign tip, and I'm I'm like blown away all, every week, man. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And I've been working. I've actually been working with InDesign before it was even named InDesign, uh, version 0 0.9 that was uh, shown at, uh, at at an Apple um, MacWorld event in San Francisco. Like uh, feels like a century ago. All right, but anyway, so here we are. And uh, well, I've been doing lots of stuff. Uh, also, uh, I'm I'm translating. Uh, textbooks. I'm writing, uh, authoring textbooks. I've written a couple of books on InDesign in Norwegian. And um, if you find somebody who wants to pay me for turning those books into <laughs> into English, I would be very, very happy to to try to do that. So let me see here. So my presentation obviously is um, in InDesign. So uh, we're just gonna. I, I just can help myself with. A, uh, I'm not sure if you've seen the. Um, the, uh, the wonderful uh, video blog called uh, Fun with Flags, <laughs> Mr. Sheldon Cooper. And if you haven't, you, you can look it up. <laughs> I just had to call this Fun, fun with Frames because, um, because that's what uh, InDesign is all about. And, and people call them boxes and whatever, but uh, you know, the, the, the correct term for all those content containers in InDesign is actually frames. And, uh, those uh, who might have been around for a few years and know about um, something called Quark Express, um, uh, that was all using the term box. That's probably the reason why uh, Adobe ended up uh, uh, notoriously using the term frame instead of box. So uh, all these boxes are are not boxes; they're frames. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about. Uh, I'm going to actually try to. I've been trying to to to. Um, Put this together so there's a little bit ba basic stuff and a little bit uh, about new functions in the program at the same time, you know. So, so a little bit for everyone, hopefully. Okay, and uh, it's not a course, so I'm not go like super in depth. Uh, okay, your uh, oh. IN two hundred one seven should be ringing now. Uh, um, can I just ask everybody who's on <laughs> Zoom to please mute themselves and then they aren't talking? And if you want to ask a question, just unmute. Is that okay with you to be interrupted, Tom? Oh, absolutely. I was about to say something uh, to the effect, to that effect, yeah. I, I also forgot, I was kind of foolish while I was doing the introductions. It would be a good idea if we, if, if we could, before you launch far into this, do a group grid shot, if everybody wouldn't mind showing their smiling oh. <laughs> faces, and we'll take a screenshot and we can put it up on the website, and I don't know Let's if we do have that, to send uh, it to Adobe. Wait, 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 while everyone is still here, Let's see, where's my little, I don't think I lost my, oh, here it is, I will smile. <laughs> Who's taking the screenshot? I think if you, if you stop sharing, then we can oh. go into 
grid view. Oh, uh, I'm still sharing. Yeah. Oh, I don't know why I'm having. Oh, here's grid Good. view. All seen share. I think I have a nice screenshot. OK. Now I've got 12 people in the grid, and half of them are hiding. Sherry and Tom, well, Tom's his duplicate. Tom is, Tom but we got, we, got, we got two rows full of people. That's good enough. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so um, You're beautiful, Carol. <laughs> let me get this. Oh, now we got Cornelius. Wait a oh, second. We got to really? redo this right. now that we have the real Cornelius. OK. Got it. Thank you. So I'm going to go back here to then share. So uh, I'm not sure if you saw that. I was uh, I was um, I was trying here just be while we were doing the introductions. I was trying to um, let me see. I'm going to turn off my video again. I need all the bandwidth I can for the screen sharing. But anyway, I did I did upload the file to a um, uh, the files to a uh, OneDrive share location. And I posted the address there in the chat pod. Um, it should look something like this if you, um, let me see here. Uh, yeah, this is the folder on, on my system. But uh, if, if you click in there and if you go in there, you should be able to download these two files. One is fairly big, 40, 50 megabytes. And the other one is uh, very, very little, it's only text files. And uh, <clears throat> the purpose of that, whether you do it after, at a, at a later point, just because you, I mean, if you want to review uh, and try things after the fact, or if you want to try to actually just look at the file, there is a PDF in there as well. If you don't even have InDesign installed, you can just look at the, I mean, screens in, in, in a PDF format. But anyway, the files are there. There is a links folder as well. Uh, once you unpack that big old zip file and it will the um, um, like subfolders, like a link, everything is basically there. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about tips and tricks and how uh, the, how basic work is done in InDesign, but also about what's new. And what's new is uh, sometimes it's for me it's uh, I mean it, for me it's hard to catch up and and stay uh, uh, up to speed with all the all the news. We you, we get updates like several times a year and like a major update at least once or maybe twice a year. It's it's uh, kind of frustrating. So the ba the biggest uh, change <laughs> uh, the last time was probably the uh, icon. <laughs> And uh, the colors are there, if you could see that. Uh, my, um, are, you guys, uh, excuse me. are you guys getting a lot of reverb on your audio? Or is it just me? Just due, That's just due to his bandwidth. Oh, really? I'm so, getting it. Yeah, I hear a little bit of robotic. Yes, me too. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I, that I sounds good to me. He sounds auto-tuned. All right. Let's, uh, uh, so if, if it, conti it continues or if it gets worse, please let me know. And I, I, can, I can try to connect a different uh, a microphone, but- uh, We can still understand you. Well, that is a good thing. I, I'll try not, I try not to speak too fast. I'm, I usually run out of time when we were doing uh, the two hour presentations. And now I have been told I have like 45 minutes. So sometimes you want to speed it up. But I know as, a, as a, an instructor, that doesn't help much, does it? So anyway, here's the new, uh, here's the new logo. Uh, if you can see the bottom of, of my screen, which I cannot see on my monitor, it's like the, the the task bar at the bottom of my screen, the, I, you will see the old and the new logos right there next to each other. And I, the only thing that, that uh, baffles me is that they made this new, these new guys with the rounded corners and the, the lacking frames so much smaller. But anyway, that's it. There's a, there's a lot of new stuff, but maybe not too important for people. You know, the uh, InDesign is so, uh, rich of features that it's, it could be complicated to think of something new to add to this program. You know, it is a specialized tool for all kinds of printed matter. You know, that's what InDesign is in a nutshell. And, uh, and it's been around for so long and you can, you can wonder, you know, what, what more could we possibly want, you know? So they changed the icon and called it a new version, you know, but there are some new things, you know, and, and that finally we got the, at the top left, we got that little house. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's uh, the little house, the little home screen. 
that has been uh, a little, uh, little um, uh, unpopular feature. Uh, they call it the start screen. Saying for since they introduced the start screen, I've been saying I won't be using it until you turn it into a home screen that I can access, even though I'm have having open documents, you know, like this. And Photoshop got it about a year ago. Illustrator got it working that way about a year ago, and 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 we all knew it's just a matter of time until we get get the same functionality in InDesign. And and here it is. I can click the InDesign icon at the top left and. I will switch back to my document and there's nothing wrong with that screen, but when you have to close all your open documents in order to get there, that was like, uh, I mean, kind of silly really. So uh, we could, you could turn it off through, through preferences, but now I will encourage people to, to check it out and, and use it. It's a visual guide to your most latest uh, files you've been working on and also a link to a lot of tutorials and also templates for new documents. So it's uh, it's kind of cool. Like I said, you just click the little oh, create new. You will go to you will go to uh, all the all the uh, templates and for all kinds of purposes. You know you you you, you know and design used to be uh, print only, but you know. Uh, now you can create interactive publications and include videos and sounds and publish them online and, and everything. So, so, but for me, I'm still very much a paper person and I love reading on paper and I love uh, putting out paper um, publications. So here we are in InDesign and there are, so the home screen screen is one thing. Another thing that they added uh, during one of the later updates, it's uh, what they call the, um, um, the uh, properties panel and it looks like this and uh, i still haven't figured it out because uh i'm using what you can see at the top of the screen the horse the control panel or the control bar and uh, if you look closely and even when you're working because both of these panels are dynamic so if you select something you click on something to select it uh, both the control panel at the top and the properties panel to the right will be populated with relevant information regarding that that selected object, you know. And if you double click here on the text and you enter into text, you will see that that uh, uh, all the text properties for the selected text will display both places as well. So I, I and there's nothing extra, you know, for me, it's nothing extra. I can, there's nothing over here that I cannot do here at the top. So uh, maybe maybe they can work on something and make it more useful. They just uh, hide it or close it or you know stash it away in the corner so it doesn't intervene with my my regular work. Now every panel in InDesign is a, is available on the window. Uh, menu and that is very similar uh, in Photoshop. You might be familiar with it. You look, you will look, you're looking for a panel. You will go to the window menu. Uh, same thing in Illustrator. Same thing in a lot of other Adobe programs. You know the difference here, especially compared to Illustrator, is that most of the panels are actually in sub menus. You know, so you have to really go look for whatever you're looking for. Some of them are top level, like the properties one here. And also the other one here called the control. That's the control panel. That's the horizontal field at the top. And um, and um, uh, the arrangement of panels is called workspaces. And um, up here in the menu at the top, you have a lot of prefab workspaces that ship with the program, and you can create your own. A essentials sounds very essential. So what happens when you when you switch to a workspace is that all the panels and positions and some open, some closed, you know, it's like walking into a different room with different furniture and different layout, you know. And what uh, kills me is that um, <laughs> the properties panel pops up and the control panel goes away. And no, I don't like that. And then they have something called Essentials Classic, which uh, is more like uh, the way it used to be, I guess. Uh, and then you will get uh, uh, some other panels come popping up here. I'm going to reset that so we can see exactly what it's like. And still the control panel is, oh yeah, there we go. 
we get the we get the you know the control panel back and everything. But I have my own one, uh, my own, own over here. I have on my generic workspace. I have set up special workspaces for bookwork and for developing like so rearranged panels. And then when you're happy with it, you just go up here and you choose a new workspace and you give it a name and you can have as many as you want. All right. So what about frames? Everything in InDesign will have to be in a frame. A, a, a frame is like a content container and uh, I can use uh, a multitude of tools to create a frame. And uh, like these drawing tools over here, could be a little confusing over here to the left on the menu. You see, um, and if you press and hold, you will see that it pops up a little group of, of tools there. It's the rectangle tool, ellipse tool, and polygon tools. And if you go to the one right above them, it's, it's they, these tools look the same and they are almost have the same names, you know. So you can right click, use the right mouse button, or you can click and hold uh, on top of those tools to see the group tools. And you've got rectangle frame tools, and then you got the rectangle tools. And what are really the difference in differences? So I'm going to just try here real quick and create a, a, a random frame here using the frame tool. And I get a frame that has shows like a blue little bounding box with a blue big X on top of it. And that X is only showing when you have turned on the visibility of frames. You can see on my screen, you can see little traces of frames almost everywhere. That's a, that's a setting. The shortcut is command H or control H, so I can turn that on and off. Uh, sometimes it's, it's a little bit too much. You don't want too many of these frames showing. Uh, but in order to see that X on cross, uh, uh, crossing these frames that don't have no fill, no stroke, no color, no contents, no nothing, it's just a placeholder, right? You have to have that, those, uh, those showing. Uh, if I create a frame using the other tool here, you see that I will be creating, I get a different result. So I will get a, in this case, I will get a, a frame with a one point black stroke around it and a white fill. You can't really see the white fill, but it is a white fill. The default in InDesign is actually no fill at all, but I, I changed the default for my document. So I get a white fill. So it's easier to select that object. So these are two basically different types of, uh, of frames. And if I go to the object menu and there is a, <clears throat> there is a content sub menu here, and you see that this second frame I, created is called unassigned. And if I go here and click on the first one, and uh, I have to drill down here again, and see um, object uh, content, you see that that is considered a, a, a graphic frame. So if I, if I switch the, to the type tool here, I can create a, a text frame or a type frame, you know, over here. So that's the third kind of of a, of, a, of, a, of a frame. And now once I have it selected, you see that along the edges, uh, none of this, what you can see here, I'm gonna to try to zoom in here a little bit. So maybe you can see that a little clearer. Um, yeah, that's why I'm, I want to have that monitor because there's a lag, right? There's a considerable lab, lag, since, I mean, since I've, I performed the zoom and then it's like two seconds and then I can see that zoom shows on the other screen. But that, there we go. So this is a text frame and, and the, none of these uh, adornments as they call them along the edges of the, the text frame are printable. They're non-print objects, but they're all different functions. You have the handles in the corners. You have this little port over here. You can see at the top left and the bottom right, all next to another text frame from one frame to another. You have this little blue blue thing here and the yellow thing, and you know, so all this is just functionality, you know. And and to, to put it very briefly, you, this little blue thing is if you want to anchor a frame into some other text so they stick together, uh, you can hover over it and you get the tooltip. And the other one is to create rounded corners on on or corner effects on any object. So I'm going to zoom out again here. So, uh, so these are the three basic types of frames. There is a multitude of other type of types of frames, uh, and that will be like 
uh, frames for different kind of contents like video frames or sound frames or animations or whatever that you can use here but but none of that is very relevant if you want to create a print publication okay so i'm not gonna uh, spend any time on that at this point so the basic principle is that you always differentiate between uh, the programs to uh, it's very technical very uh, pro procedural you, you need to know how to learn this and do that and stitch it all together but but of course what we're really doing is communication right we have a message we want to convey to somebody else so that's basically what we're doing and unfortunately the communication aspect of creating a design like this is it's usually not time to put into uh, into a regular uh, like very technical functional uh, course, you know, so anyway, so this is a, a little bit about the basics. You know, you need to have a frame. So you have the container and the content. So but the deal is that these three types of frames, the unassigned ones and the graphic ones and the text ones, uh, the frames are empty. Once you start filling them with contents, it, it doesn't really matter because you can interchange them. You can put one kind of content into a different kind of frame and vice versa. So I can select a frame here and I can uh, try to place some graphics in here. Let me do um, let me do one of these little pooches over here. This little Joey. Anyway, so now this frame has contents, right? And the the picture is much bigger than the frame. So uh, and, and you can even go here on the menu and you see select con content select container. That's like two different things. You can select and work with the container, which is the frame I created, or I can switch and work with the contents. And you might see, I uh, hope you see on the video now, when, when the content is selected, there's a, there's a, a frame showing with, uh, with different uh, handle, different color, and still has the frame. So it's a relation between the the frame and the contents. And that's the basic principle to understand. And that's why some people start in design, they, they manage to set up a page and then they want to type something and, uh, and they, they can't do it because, well, nobody told them that you need to create a text frame in order to, to enter text because text also needs to be in a frame. Okay, so uh, the, there's a number of ways you can switch. And the easiest way is just to double click. If I want to go from, uh, I have the contents here, by the way, so I can go here and move the contents inside my frame to get a better, uh, you know, a better display of that image. But if I want to go back to the frame, I just double click. That's the easiest way to switch between the contents and the container. You just don't waste that you can switch between the two. Like the menu options, I told you there is a little donut here in the middle. It's called the content grabber. A lot of people turn it off because it's they don't like it, but it's there. So I can, I can just grab it and just move the contents uh, like this. Uh, but the easiest way, I think, and the way I usually do it is by double clicking, you know, just the switching between the two. Now, so over here, this is any fill color or anything like that. Now, this one has a stroke, like a one point. Uh, I can make that uh, wider, of course, up here. I want to I have this um, big old um, uh, zoom menu that is actually, um, I wonder if I can move it out of here, move it over to my second screen. Yeah, there we go. You probably don't see it, but I'm, it's like obscuring my view. Anyway, so I can, of course, change this uh, and and create a, a create a, a you know a, a, a more solid you know a, a thicker uh, frame. I can actually put a, a color in here, you know, and 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 I can change everything. I can use uh, these uh, Adobe. You very easily hide all those auxiliary, that auxiliary information. I was just pressing the W on my keyboard as long as I'm not in the text frame. They will give you a print preview and that, that hides in instantly all those, um, uh, well, little disturbing things. You can just press W again and all those uh, guides and, and, and frame edges and everything will become visible again. So it's very easy to switch. So Tom, this is- ask a question? Yeah. Um, with the picture, is it possible to like 
zoom in on it, make it bigger, you know, have That's it not take up the whole frame? And is the oh, frame all, that, always the same size as the content or no. could they be different? That's a that's a very very good and relevant question, and and I'm 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 moving in that direction. I will answer it in in a little while. Thank you. I'll be patient. So uh, let me I, let me illustrate that because that's very close to what I actually have. Oh no no no, it's no problem. Just keep asking, and you know if uh, same picture, but let's do another one here. So I just select the frame and then I I paste it in there. Uh, I I import it directly into the frame. And you see the frame that used to have a color, the color doesn't show anymore, right? Because the picture is actually filling the whole frame. If I go here and grab the contents and move it a little bit to the side, you see that, uh, well, it doesn't look good, but you know, the, the, the color, background color is still there. The frames are still showing and the strokes are still showing. The, the dog is not really, you cannot see much more than the little, Sweet little uh, nose of his there. So here's the deal, and this is where we where where we going um, at this point. There's um, a a large fitting submenu in InDesign, and you see there's um, oh I have the wrong frame uh, selected. Cornelius can uh, tell you what 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 is the thing. I think Cornelius select select then effect is not it or something like that. You need to select the correct thing. So here you see, this is a, par a partial answer to your question. Uh, you see all these commands you can use to control the relationship between the frame and the contents. And the one that I really like a lot is, uh, is the one at the top. It's a fill frame proportionally. It will shrink the image and center it inside the frame. Uh, but, you know, if, if they're not the same portion some pieces will be sticking out you know so if i double click now to, to see you see that a little bit of the pictures is, is the left hand side there's not really any good point in creating keeping the an image smaller uh, than the frame even though it's, it's perfectly possible to do it uh, indesign is based on a hundred percent trust in the user and i'm not sure if we always deserve that I've seen people who lose their images inside their frames. They can do something like this. And, and in this one lets you do it. It's pretty meaningless, right? Drag the whole contents away from that little window where it's supposed to show, but it's still technically in there and you don't get an error message from doing this. So the, the good thing is that if everything looks bad and, and I mean, so where is my thing? Where's my picture? Remember that command and the first one here is the best one fill frame proportionally and it will jump back in and, and be centered right there in the middle and finally here in the text frame i can just double click that frame as well and uh yeah. oh that's very little i can make it a little yeah, quick. so in order to type text uh, uh I, I need to be in text in order to do so i can oh it's, it's not my dogs is barking <laughs> he's a, he's a What happened? Sorry, Tom. It was my fault. I was trying to mute whoever's dog was barking, and I muted Tom. My bad. Still can't hear. Karen, remember Tom has two personas, Tom and Tom B. Yes, I'm not going to mute any Tom, but I have asked him to unmute, but he's not. Let me see. Oh, there you go. Am I? Uh, okay. Yeah. You, yeah. You, I, I'm sorry. I accidentally muted you briefly. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. I hope you didn't miss too much. No, uh, no. I was I'm saying that even the, even the text will have to be inside a frame. And you can stack stuff on top of each other. You know? So, so you know and, and of course you I, I would normally never do this i will make sure the frame fits to to crop the image and then i would uh now if i have not if i have not created a frame to hold my text or my picture so if i just click on an empty space i have nothing selected and i can do the file place command that's what i do using a shortcut here uh, and i can place something 
uh, let's introduce the little kitty cat. And what happens then is that you get a, what they, we call a loaded place cursor. And um, there is actually showing up. It's showing up perfectly on the video feed. That's nice. Um, except that uh, on my screen, I can't see the, the page anymore. I just, oh, there it is. It's a considerable lag here now. So no, we'll have to look at that. But the deal is that you can, when you place this on a page, uh, there will actually be created a frame. Okay, so I can click or drag. I can drag here and say I want my little kitty cat down here, and uh, and there he goes. And the frame is created for me. That little adornment on the top left, little link, means that the frame is linked to the file that's in the in the folder. So you you don't really have to. The picture is not copied and saved into. Um, into the InDesign file that will call for very very large files. Okay, so this is just like a this is like it's like a primer and how to understand the duality of uh, of frames. And by the way, uh, since you you did answer, I mean you did ask me how can you control the contents independently of the frame. So if I double click again to con con. Uh, switch to the contents over here. If I like want to zoom in, I want to make the big the dog bigger and other things. What I do, I grab the handle on the contents and I hold down the shift key. You have to do that. Hold down the shift key. And then I just drag. And I can reposition the whole thing in here. Okay. So so and you see, it's still the the pixels in the image that are not showing are still there. They're still intact, so you can zoom out again later, and you can drag any corner. Hold hold down the shift key if you hold down the shift key and the option key or the or the uh, alt key, you will go move from the center like this. So it's um, well, see uh, see the lagging again. So so. Um, I'm going to go a little slowly here, but yes, you, you you just select the contents, and then you you need to hold down shift, or it will be um, you will be distorting the image. How, and, how can um, you be sure you're choosing the content rather than the frame? You see, well, first of all, in this case, it's easy because the the frame is so much bigger. I mean, the 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 handles here, the bounding box and the handles are way outside the frame, so. Obviously, it's got to be the contents. Uh -huh. The other thing that it's like the complementary color of the frame. My frames are blue, but this is more like a orange brown kind of color. It's like exactly the the complementary color of the frame. And if you're in doubt, you can always go up here and uh, and uh, and go to the select menu, and you see that uh, I cannot. You see the content option is grayed out because it's all selected. And and you have the equivalent, uh, actually, buttons over here as well in the control panel. It's called select containers, select contents. So I don't mean to confuse, thank confuse you, anybody, thank you. but you're welcome. But you know, I know there's a lot of there's always more than one way of doing the same thing in these programs. And and uh, and could and, I ask a question too? Sure. Oh, uh, so does it matter whether it's a graphic text or unassigned box to begin with? No, and how do you know? Oh, okay. uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. What was the oh, last how, uh, how do you know, um, let, let's say you got this picture like this, uh, handed from another artist, and um, would you know which one was a graphic text or unassigned frame based on a work that's randomly given to you? Well, the, 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 the workaround or the easiest answer to that question is to, you, you just go here and place it. You just make sure nothing is selected on the page. You go here and you place it. And whatever you want to place, remember the, the metaphor for InDesign is the good old pasteboard, you know. So you, you, you just place stuff on the pasteboard. So if I, and since you don't have a frame, the correct type of frame will be created for you. If you select a text file now, you, you want to place a text file, import a text file. Of course, InDesign will create a text frame for you. And if I select a, a picture like I just did with the cat, 
uh, it, will, it will create a picture frame. So uh, that types of frame, uh, like the unassigned versus graphics, only applies to empty frames and they're only placeholders for a layout. And on my next page, I have, uh, I think I'm gonna move over here because you see, well, actually there's one more thing. We're talking about what's new in InDesign. So I'm just gonna do one little thing before we um, move on to the next page. And that is uh, uh, something, it's here on the list of uh, what's new. It is content aware fit. Content aware fit is right over here. That's, um, here it is, content aware fit. And uh, you might, if you've been using Photoshop, you might be uh, familiar with the content aware uh, technology that Adobe has been uh, developing, uh, where you can easily remove stuff from images and it's, it's really like magic sometimes. And here they try to apply the same, uh, they call it artificial intelligence. So I'm, 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 I don't know, I think my own <laughs> intelligence sometimes is it seems to be very artificial, but uh, but I'm not sure. But it's it's like it's should, so they try to use the same technology and apply that to uh, to cropping images. You know, believe it or not. So let's uh, uh, let's just uh, see where. Yeah, first of all, it's if I select an image over here, uh, you will see that a. Um, uh, again, there's a considerable delay here, like I said. Let me see here. If I select the frame, you'll see that there's uh, all these fitting options that I showed you on the menu are actually also here on the control panel with little icons over here. And then they added this one. That's a content aware fit. When you click it, nothing much necessarily happens, but uh, it will try to analyze the picture and use whatever rules they have implemented in there, like golden rule or whatever, to, and they try to identify faces and bu buildings or whatever, and they try to apply. Uh, so that is the new thing. They, they ported the uh, content aware technology into InDesign and try to use it to automatically, uh, well, uh, like I said, you know, make the job easier for us. You can still overwrite it afterwards. You can still click here and move the picture around and, 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 and do whatever you want. Now, the cool thing is, and if you want to make that a default for all new frames or, or pictures that you place, you can go to the edit preferences that's on the Windows computers. On the Mac, you know, is the InDesign menu and preferences. You go to general and, uh, and there's uh, at the bottom here, they've added this thing about content aware fit and it says make content or fit aware fit the default frame fitting options. You can just click here. Don't click the more info. I did that earlier today and you, you, you don't get anything about this new function, unfortunately, but all about, all about the other ways of fitting contents to frames. Maybe they're gonna work on that. So I'm gonna make that the default from now. So just keep that in mind, it's easy to forget. So now I'm gonna move over to my next page here. And I'm going to put a couple of pictures in here. Uh, so I'm just going to select the frame and I'm going to select this little thing. Uh, if you're in Austin and can uh, go kayaking in the morning. All right, it's loading, it's loading, it's loading. There you go. There it's showing on, on my monitor screen. So this is a big picture. Um, I can show you the, uh, the whole picture, but I can place the same, it, it's, I use the iPhone's panorama function. It was kind of cool. But anyway, so I'm placing the same picture in the other frame. And remember that the, uh, the artificial intelligence, whatever thing is turned on at this point. So I'm gonna select this frame and I'm gonna, uh, no, I'm not gonna paste anything, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go in here and do the place. And I'm gonna do the same picture over here and it will analyze the picture and does a pretty good job. I mean, I'm not sure if I could have done this better myself. If, if you go here, you see the whole picture will look uh, something like this, you know, it's a little bit of the kayak and a little bit of the sunrise over there. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's actually kind of cool. So the third frame I have here is a text frame. So I'm gonna select the text frame and because I'm lazy and sometimes you need uh, to go here and do, um, uh, you have to go to the type menu and you have this command that's so filled with placeholder text. So uh, there you go. And that's, a, that's like a three column text. And you know, the, the, um, 
Oh yeah. I'm very happy I have this uh, extra little monitor so I can actually see the see the delays and uh, that is my dog. Means his uh, mother is coming home. <laughs> All right, if you can hear him barking. But anyway, so that is a that is a text frame already set up to to accommodate um, um, uh, uh, the body text here, you know, with the three columns and the uh, topography for for that text. I was uh, I was going to tell you. I know I I'm, I'm, time is going a little faster for me now, so I, I'm. I was going to talk to you about that function, uh, but I'm not sure if you use this function. And there is a similar function that is automatic in both Illustrator and Photoshop. Whenever you create a text frame in either of the other two programs, it will always be populated with something called lorem ipsum kind of rubbish text that's just like a placeholder text. And you can just start typing and the, the dummy text goes away. And in design, there is this command that is type filled with placeholder text right here. Now, um, I'm going to close my door. It's not going to take even a second. So, uh, there we go. There might be some background noises here. So, um, we'll see. But anyway, so, uh, so there we go. Yeah, I'm going to talk a little about that place solar text because why, what I have already done here, if you use that command with your InDesign, it will probably text that it's not even in English or easy to understand. It's not even real Latin text that I've heard. Uh, not that I would ever know, but anyway. So there is a way in InDesign you can actually swap that and change that and customize that and, and use your own text for that function. And you need that if you're gonna work with like uh, body text, like hyphenations and, and spell checkers and stuff like that and make sure that the text really, really looks good. You need to have a, some dummy text in the correct language, okay? If you have real text for the project you're working on, of course, that's uh, all the better. But if you don't, you, you have all these other functions that you can use. Now, the deal is that I can use any, I can change any frame into any other frame. I can go here and select the contents and just delete it. And I can type in here with the, with the text tool and, I, and then suddenly this becomes a, a text frame, okay? I can even use that command and, and fill it up if, I, if for every reason that, that's something I would wanna do. And also even more so, if I select a text frame accidentally, maybe, I mean, if I do it on purpose, that's fine. But if I do it accidentally, I have a frame selected when I place an image. That could be a little annoying because, uh, let me do, which one should I do? Let me do these two happy guys. Uh, you see what happens. It replaces the contents, whatever it was before with the, because InDesign has this one principle. It has a, a incredible faith in the users. They always think that we know what we're doing, <laughs> which is funny because, I mean, usually we don't, right? So, <laughs> but anyway, my text frame uh, became, I, I turned the image frame into a text frame. I, I, turn, I accidentally, or well, I did on purpose, uh, placed it in uh, uh, unlimited, uh, undo in InDesign, it will go on forever. Uh, you can undo all the way back to when you open the document. You can undo past saves. Okay, so that's um, a couple of little things. So I'm going to go on here and talk a little bit more about container and contents. And uh, because those are the two main things to think about when we're talking about a, a, a frame or a container. And you have all these kinds of things you can do like over here you have, um, let me turn on preview here so it looks a little better. This is just a very simple frame with uh, a 70 point stroke. And the stroke type is um, dashed like this. And when you use a dashed or a multi-line frame style in InDesign, even the dotted ones, you can apply two colors. One for the, the stroke color is actually over here in the control panel over here, but the gap color is here in the panel. So I can change the gap color. Oh, that was not pretty. Um, so I can change the, 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 the styles and the colors. And in this case, I just did a, I'm gonna set it back to where it was. So I'm gonna set it back to this. It's kind of, kind of pretty looking. 
But if I change the width of this frame, you see that it will, um... oh man. It will expand, you know, it will, it's very thin frame. So we will, it will build those little missing parts there, you know, so uh, there we go. But it's actually empty in the middle. Uh, so I'm gonna undo that again. Um, let me see here. So if I drag it down here, well, it's in the back as you can see. So I, if I wanna put it in the front, I just go here and say, bring to front. It's a stacking order. You don't physical stacking order. So uh, I was wrong about that because I changed the default, but I can make it see through in the middle, you know, if I wanna frame this little dog and put him on the wall. This is your, this is, uh, <laughs> this is um, Kenneth's domain. He's an expert in uh, simulating, I mean, creating frame frames on pictures, okay. But this is not all. The container and the contents, you can easily argue that there's a third part of these frames, and that is a vector shape, a vector shape. Now, when the, all the frames we've been working, for so, working with so far are rectangular or square, and, and that is kind of natural, but all these frames are vector shapes, and if you want to edit a vector shape, you simply switch from the black arrow to the white arrow. And then you will see that the, uh, the frame looks a little different. Actually, all these little anchor points are now selected. So I need to click once to deselect and click another time to select it. And now you see that I can, I can go in here and change the shape of the object. So now you have not only the container and the contents, you have this third dimension to it, which is, the, the actual shape there. And if I use the fill, um, fill frame, uh, I'm going to do the, uh, the smart one here again. It wasn't that smart, but it, it got a little better. At least it filled it up here. Yeah. So anyway, so you, you can do that. You know, you can change the shape of things. And, and, and the truth is that you can, you can use any, let me just switch back to the black arrow. So you can, you can, any, <laughs> you can, put any content into any frame that has any shape, okay? <laughs> so that makes it a very, very creative tool, I think, that you can um, work with. Uh, so I have a few shapes over here just to show what little things you can do. There's uh, the, the polygon tool over here. There's a little learning threshold here, but you can actually add and subtract, uh, you know, uh, you can make it like, uh, uh, like a star whatever, and whenever you have your shape and you place an image into it, it will, it will be cropped to that, um, to that shape, you know? So it's, it's uh, and you can even put text in here. Uh, I wouldn't want to do that normally, but, uh, but you can. And uh, for those who know uh, Illustrator, we have the pen tool over here. We have um, um, uh, a lot of the vector drawing tools. We have the pencil tool, the pen tool, and I can, um, you know, do uh, do all the stuff that you can do with the um, uh, with the pen tool. Oh, of course, I missed that. You can draw any shape, you know, and with a little luck, I can create my little two-pointed heart over here. I think I got that little point wrong, but anyway. So you can uh, you can create any any shape you want uh, using the drawing tools and they are plentiful you know when you can add points to a vector you can subtract them you can put whatever you want in there and you can even group objects you know so if i have a picture of the dog i want to put a little heart in here i'm going to put it to the front um it's the front keyboard shortcut for front uh, oh it's in the <laughs> it's a different layer of course i didn't i didn't plan for that but of course i can do that I can move it to a different layer. Maybe it isn't. Arrange, bring to front. It's always something that goes wrong. There you go. So instead of having it like sitting on top there, I, I could actually select both of them and just group them now, but I could have grouped it with the image ahead of time and then pasted it, the group inside a frame and it will be all cropped. So it's, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a it, the learning, the initial learning threshold is not that high, but it's, basically endless what you can do beyond that, you know? So, and these are just some keywords I put in here in my presentation. We got curves, lines, you know, you can work with, uh, you know, the, the pencil tool is fairly uh, easy because the, 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 
the vector, the line will actually appear where you draw, whereas the pen tool is more indirect. But uh, they all work the same as an illustrator. It's basically the illustrator tools that I have been just implemented in, in and included inside of the InDesign, which is awesome. And you have all these visual effects. You have uh, stuff like um, uh, arrowheads uh, that they have improved incredibly here. So if you want to create callouts, so uh, let me make this a little bigger, uh, the stroke a little wider. You see that the uh, the stars, I mean the arrow shape here is is following suit, but I can go in here and actually scale the arrowheads independently of of the stroke, you know, the beginning and the end. So it gives you incredible control. And of course you can go here after the fact and just, um, uh, and change, change it, you know, and, and, uh, and build on it and, and, you know, you can curve it and whatever. So there you go. And even this frame, this line, by the way, guess what is inside a frame. And that is, doesn't even make sense to me, but even this, this one straight line, with an arrow on it has to be inside a frame, which makes it weird if you use the handles here to try to manipulate it. it it's not intuitive in my book anyway. So you switch, in that case, you switch to the white arrow, in which case you can, you can grab the actual points on the vector and you can control it. Of course, you can change yeah. color, style, and everything. Can you convert that okay. to outlines? Um, there is a way to do it. I do not remember exactly how. Okay. I'll there look is, at um, it. You can. So okay. um, it's similar. It, there is a there is a workaround. Well, it's it's actually a function, but it's just not. It's like similar to the expand function of uh, of Illustrator. That will convert it to outline, right? And it's uh, it's 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 here somewhere. Um, uh, objects. Paths. Um, there's, you have to do this in a very special order. I will look it up. Let's say you, you create these frames. I'll look and it up later. Yeah, but it's possible. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, you know, if you, if you apply, um, it's the same technique as if you apply corner effects on a rectangle. Uh, and for some reason you want to, and these are considered live corner effects, right? And, and you can expand that as well. So it actually creates that vector shape and you will get the little handles and you can keep on modifying it. So that's like very similar to the expand function in, in the Illustrator. Okay. I hope this makes sense. I'm, I'm uh, going a little bit back and forth here, but, um, but uh, and I'm, I have no idea how we're doing on time here, but I will just, um, I'll just keep going until somebody knocks me on the head. Um, well, Tom, uh, just so you know, it's 718 now. Maybe you could go another 15, 20 minutes and then we'll have a period for more for questions or discussion, uh, or things like that. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, uh, yeah, to just keep going. This is, uh, this is a slide I, I was planning to spend a lot of time on, but this is the one I will actually cut a little short. Um, so I, because I have two or three more slides that I really, really want to do. So it's more about text frames and special things you can do with text now uh, that are new actually. But uh, just let me mention real quick what we're talking about here. There is, um, I already showed you the, the, I think there is a text frame here, isn't it? So there is, um, so when I use the fill place all the text command, I get text in English but you don't. And here's the reason. I have already like cheated a little bit and I have changed it in my system. Let me see here. You need to go, there is a, there's a certain method you can do to customize that text that is being used for the felt that command. And what you have to do is uh, Adobe InDesign, make the correct version. And once you're, in the same folder that the InDesign program itself is living, you know? I can see the InDesign.exe here. On the Mac, that will be the InDesign app thing, you know? You have to make sure you're in that folder. 
And in that folder, you copy or create a, 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 a file and it has to be called exactly this that I'm, pay, I'm uh, pointing on right now. It's called placeholder.txt. Placeholder.txt. That's when you will, uh, in this angle, use the contents of that text file instead of that Latin thing, lorem ipsum thing, okay? So, um, and I have, you see, I have lots of them here. If I want like uh, I'm English, uh, USA, English with the uh, 10 by 10, that is just for me to remember that that is 10 paragraphs with 10 sentences in each paragraph. Uh, or have this one large paragraph, it's only one paragraph with no, you know. If I want to change this, what I do, I just delete the, um, uh, and of course you need, in this, in this computer you need to be an administrator to be allowed to do this. I just delete that one. If I go back to, um, uh, I have this updated here slow. Just deleted it, didn't I? Uh, but anyway, maybe I deleted another one. Can you undo? You can undo. But anyway, so I, uh, so what I do here is I just pick another one, you know, which one would I do? Maybe that one with one large paragraph with no paragraph breaks in it. I just duplicate that file uh, and that copy uh, exactly that, you know, placeholder.txt. You know, like this, and again, I have to do it. And the same thing is on a, goes on the Mac. It has to be in the same folder as the program itself, and then you can create a text a text file. In this case, I use several. Of course, only one is active at the at the time. And instead of just renaming the file, I duplicate it first, so I will always keep all my different versions in there. So if I go back here now, uh, I will probably get uh, uh, might have been the one that was already selected so uh, I'll only get one large block of text with without any you know so at the right hand side of this presentation <clears throat> you see uh, what you can do in Word uh, to generate these commands inside a Word document um, it could, could be handy um, I'm not sure <laughs> I'm not going to spend a lot of time on Word I, I promise but um, I'm not sure what's going on here uh, Where did you get the English or did you change it yourself? Oh, this is actually from, uh, yeah, that, that's, uh, let me, let me show you this because there's, if you go online and you, and you Google, um, uh, where is it? If you Google lorem ipsum generators, you will get hundreds of hits. But this okay. one is, this one is the best one. It's called fed up with lorem ipsum. Okay. This is the URL that is uh, right here at the bottom of my screen over here. This is this URL. All have to be on one line, of course. Okay. It's from England, but it's uh, still cool. It uses, it picks random text from uh, Wikipedia and creates dummy text for you. You can, uh, you, you can type a topic, like paragraphs. I don't, I don't want bullet points, I want paragraphs. And I want plain text, I don't want the HTML tags. And then I just click here and get my text and it's loading random text from Wikipedia. And I can click here to copy it to my clipboard. And I can go back in here and just select everything and, and paste it. And of course it was a little, little, but you see how it works, okay? So that is an awesome one. For the other ones I've, I've looked for, I have a, I have the study in Scarlet, Sherlock Holmes novel. Uh, it's uh, beyond, of course, I'm not going to publish it, so I'm not breaking any laws. Um, but, uh, but, you know, it's, it's in this uh, file that I uploaded for you, the placeholder text samples.zip, that's a very small file. All those files I'm using are in there. So you can play around with them if you want. And rename them, one of them, placeholder.txt and, and, and play with it. It is kind of fun. So, uh, and you do get tired of that lorem ipsum craziness anyway, so, okay. So I'm moving over to my next, next page. Um, 
So again, so what, what can we use this stuff for? You know, we can, you know, a text frame is just, a, has a vector shape just like everything else. So if I uh, want to play with these little text frames, I can, I can zoom in here a little bit at the middle. And this, by the way, is, uh, this text is flowing from the left hand. There's two separate text frames. Um, two separate text frames, but they're linked together. As you can see that little, um, in a minute, hopefully, you can see that little rubber uh, band. Oh man, it's slow today. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if all are as slow as this one, but if you can see, at least now my other screen is updating. It's like five, six seconds delay. <laughs> But anyway, you can see the little line stretching from the outport to the import of the other frame. And that means uh, that they are connected, you know, so the text will flow from one frame to another. So at this point, I'm gonna zoom in here. So these, both of these frames have like a little uh, vector anchor point on, in every corner. So I'm gonna go here and use the, um, First of all, I'm gonna use the white arrow key to select the frame here, uh, the left hand frame. And then I'm gonna just click in here. You know, with a pen tool, when you hover over a path and you see that little plus next to the icon, you can add a point to that path. And if I wanna go back here, I need to select uh, to do the similar thing on the other one. I, I uh, switch to uh, and select that frame and I switch to the um, pen tool again, and I need to see the plus. If you see the star, you will be creating a new path. So you need to see the plus, okay? And now the fun begins because now I can select that point with the white arrow key, uh, uh, white arrow tool. And I also want to select the other one. One is here and I hold the shift key and click on the other one. That's what I'm trying to do anyway. So now actually both of these points, uh, anchor points are selected, even though they're on a different, two different frames, okay? And I can move them with a mouse, which is very complicated because I had to hit like really, really, but I can also you move them with my, with my keyboard. I can hold down the shift key and use the move left. And you see that I'm just moving these two anchor points over and I can create like a, uh, an odd shape kind of, of, uh, of frames here. If I want them to be on the same level, I can do them well, each one of them like this. You see that the text will be reformatted and flow inside those frames. I can also create, um, oops, I can also create, uh, I mean, select both of these um, little guys here, the little anchor points. And I can go to the Pathfinder panel the Pathfinder panel is uh, a lot of things you ever want to do with paths and, and uh, vectors in InDesign. You find it in here, and I can I can I can convert those points to uh, curve points, and you will see that it will it will create like this little weird little. So I'm not saying this is something I would do like on a regular basis when I'm <laughs> when I'm working with text frames, but you know for some certain a design project, some, you might want to do, want to do something like that. You want to do irregular type frames, you know, that, that can, can give you some, some kind of, um, of cool. Uh, you can do a lot of things. Uh, for instance, you can, over here, you have the convert shape thing. So you can, uh, if you create a, a frame, just going to fill it, but I'm, I'm actually meant to create a text frame, but that's okay. I can still, um, make this into a text frame just by clicking on it. I just can get my text tool and I can fill it with type. Uh, and I can go in here and I can convert that rect rectangle to uh, an ellipse, select then effect, who said that? El an ellipse, triangle, no, anything. And I'm not saying this makes it easy to read. Uh, polygon, you will use the last polygon shape that you were using yourself. So, uh, but you can still go in here and actually change that. 
So, um, Tom, the, the visual display <clears throat> is such that we're, we've been looking at a square until just now it went to the polygon. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to watch my other screen at the same time because I know yeah, there's up to five it's, seconds. It's just away, really, so. it, it's really wonderful and exciting when we see it, but, but it's uh, not I immediate. See. I see, uh, I can see the crazy stuff. Of course, this is impossible to read, so uh, this is not a recommendation. It's just like a function right. that you may use. And let me uh, do this one real quick. This is just something I did for a poster once, uh, something like this. This is, a, this is actually a live A editable. Um, I can select it here and, and uh, work with it and, and type in a, a B if I want or something, you know. So this is a regular uh, letter. I'm gonna turn it into a graphics. So I'm gonna do the type create outlines command. If you want, if you uh, if you're not sure if you're doing the right thing, you should duplicate that object before you change it because you cannot convert it back to text. If you hold down the Option key or Alt key, by the way, when you're doing this, on a, from it will actually create a copy for you, but it will be right underneath, so it will be a little confusing. But now it's not text anymore. Now it's just a graphics. It's filled with black, so I'm gonna I'm gonna fill it with paper. Makes it in, uh, actually I'm gonna fill it with nothing. So. Um, it, it becomes basically invisible unless you turn on the visibility of frame edges like I do now. And now I'm gonna type inside it. I'm gonna click inside it with the type tool, okay, like this. And then I'm gonna fill it with the placeholder text again. So, uh, and for this purpose, I have created a little, um, a little uh, body type thing that would actually have the text adjusted there, you know. Actually, I have a, should have a body text with no indent as well. So there you go. So that's looking pretty good, isn't it? I, I, and, and again, I'm not saying this will increase the readability because you have a problem, especially here. <laughs> it continues over there. But still, as, a, as, an, as an illustration, part of an illustration or a background or whatever, you know, uh, it's perfectly possible to do, you know, and I, I love these features that are so easy to use. And, 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 and like I said, several times, you can put any contents into any shape. I can put a picture in here, you know, and I don't even have to remove the text in order to do that. So I can just pick, uh, which one haven't I used yet? Oh, let's do this one then. And you see, InDesign doesn't even blink, just removes the text and puts the picture in there. No, so that's that's the way it is. I can undo that and get my text back. All right. So what's next? Oh yeah, this is um, just something that I want to share with you. It's pretty old, and I see it has it hasn't updated yet. So I should be a little patient here. I can still see the dog inside the A. What can you see? The same. Well, I'm. Um, I'm running this on a 4K screen. I'm not sure if that's may maybe the reason it's uh, taking uh, quite a long time. Oh, there it goes. Circling oh, back to Sony. Did you see? Uh, do you see the Times, the Time Magazine layout? Yes. So this is just uh, something I was very inspired by Time Magazine uh, way back when I was working in uh, magazines and newspaper design in Norway, and I, I used this kind of design more than once. To be honest with you, it's called. Uh, being inspired by is not called stealing. <laughs> but what I liked was the neat structure at the top with the with the column headers, you know, and the text and the line at the bottom and, and the column rules, you know, between each column. Uh, it made it, it's still, it, it's kind of rigid. It gives you like a very rigid system, like a, almost like a grid system. But it even opens up for incredible creativity and you can vary uh, the design a lot inside of this stuff. So why is that rel this relevant now? This is a uh, 2006, it's a pretty old example. Uh, I'm pretty sure they have, um, I'm pretty sure they have updated the, the layout by now, but they might still have the, the basics. So here's the, here's my next slide. And, uh, and here's the new function in InDesign. And you see, if you wanna work with these column um, rulers, column rulers. Uh, if you place them manually, you're in for a lot of work, right? 
you can put them on the master page, but then you will have to hide them wherever they should not show, you know, so that's also a lot of tedious work. Text frame itself. So it's not a paragraph function or anything like that. It's a frame function. So you need to go to the frame command, which is um, um, D -D 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 -D. Um, text frame options, obviously, text frame options. Uh, there's so many options here now, so they created a menu to the left instead of the buttons at the top of the, of the dialog box. And this is the new one, you know, the, the column rules, and you just say uh, insert column rules, and they are created automatically like this. You have all the, uh, or at least most of the um, uh, options you do have when it comes to, um, to, uh, to rulers. You have the width. Uh, you have the color, the type. Uh, you can even do the uh, do the the multi-line ones or dotted ones if you want. You know, it could be kind of cool. Uh, you can, uh, of course, apply a color of your choice to them. So, and you can uh, shift them to the left or to the right or up or down to to make sure it, it looks the way you want them to. Okay, that is a very very cool option. So, uh, and but this is like a frame text frame option, so it doesn't go with the text as such. But what you can do is uh, create an object style, an object style that has those uh, that 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 little thing turned on, and you can apply it to several, um, you know, several uh, frames as you go. So how about images? And if you want to break this up, let me. Um, uh, if I create a, a little circle over here. And I'm just going to put a little, uh, um, uh, let's do this little, this, this little, this little, these little happy guys can be over there. And I'm going to turn on the, uh, like a little, um, actually, I, I was planning to do this before I put the picture in. So I'm going to remove the picture. So you see the point, what I'm trying to make here. See what happens when you when you create a graphics like that and you, you move it over. Uh, I'm going to copy this over here. <laughs> the video lag is uh, showing a white screen now. That's interesting. Yeah, now I can see the one with the picture and I wanted to show you the one without the picture first. So let's hope it updates again sometime soon. There you go. Do you see how um, these are actually these are actually no fill, no stroke on these circles? You can see it up here, no fill, no stroke. But because there is an object there, the uh, the column rules are are broken. They are hidden automatically. Okay, so now I can put a picture in here, and you you already see how that um, that can work. So I'm going to put these little happy people in there, and I'm going to put some other little happy guys in here. Yeah, why not these guys? So I still have the the uh, artificial intelligence turned on for cropping the images. You see, they they're doing some analysis here. You know, pretty good. And these two guys are actually pretty good friends, believe it or not. They don't play. They don't fight, which is the most important thing. So there you go. Okay, one, one more slide. That's the last one. So if we're doing okay on okay. time, I'm, I'm just going to complete that my presentation. Yeah, just the last example, and then the I last we'll thing wrap to say up. about well, it sounds yeah, that's exact. This is my last slide, so uh, it's almost like it were planned, which basically wasn't. But here we go. Let me do this real quick because uh, I cannot go very deep in this anyway. But I've shown you how you can mess with frames and customize them and shape them and. And, and make them look the way you want. But, and, and the previous slide was with the column rules. But how, what, if, what, what can you do with paragraphs itself? You know, what can you do with text inside, a, I mean, inside like a story like this? Well, if you go to the paragraph menu, you will see that you have, and you don't have to select the whole paragraph for this because it will apply to the whole paragraph. You have something called shader and uh, shading and border that you can apply to paragraphs now. And of course, it doesn't look good. First attempt doesn't look good at all. 
you will have to use other functions in conjunction with this. You have to uh, do a little indentation. You want to uh, add a little space, you know, before and after. So uh, it, 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 there's room. And then you probably want to go in here because you can alt click or option click on any of these two icons over here and you will open up the dialog box, the new dialog box for border and shading, right? So you can work on this and, and add, add padding, add spacing, uh, like um, this is the shading. And of course you have to make them similar for both the border and the shading if you're using both. So I can go here and do um, uh, offset here, top. I can offset the shading up there a little bit. I can offset the shading a little bit at the bottom, the other way. And of course you will have to go to the border and do the same thing because you want them to be, um, uh, of course, and then if you're using both, most probably you want to use, you know, use the same values. Of course, you can easily use different values, but this is pretty good. And you can change the colors and everything. So to round it up, I have created a couple of little styles just to show how I might wanna use some of these functions, okay? And that will be, um, I have something here called uh, body large red line left. That looks like this, it's like a little highlighter. So, because you can turn those rulers on, on, on and off for individual sides, one, two, three, or four sides. And of course, you can combine that with a uh, space above and below, and you can do the indentation and everything. So, I think this is uh, pretty good. That's like a, like a pull quote, you know, or you can go in here. And then I have uh, over here, maybe I should end shade. Here's a little frame, red frame with a little green background in there, you know, and um, and over here, finally, I have the uh, the one that is just, uh, you know, just a green background and a completely different topography, just like if you want to emphasize something. And that's just some examples of what you can do to uh, make these new functions work for you. And this is still one single flow of text, you know, and, and, and it's all based on paragraph styles. So, um, if I should uh, conclude with anything, it will be that frames is the frames are the building block, uh, you know, the building blocks of, of any design you do in InDesign. But uh, you know, it's actually paragraph styles that make you work efficiently. So um, uh, I hope there was. Um, I'm always available. I didn't put my email here anywhere. Uh, I can put it over here. Should be very simple. It's first name at last name dot com. Don't hesitate to contact me if uh, you have any questions about any of these programs. And of course, I love uh, working with InDesign, and um, but I love Photoshop and Illustrator uh, too, of course. So I think that concludes my presentation, and I hope I didn't do too bad on time. So um, I thought it was fun. I hope you got something out of it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Please do. When you said that content aware uses, um, can even move the negative fill, like yeah. on one of your, uh, what, is, what does that mean? No, that, it means, uh, it means that uh, it doesn't alter the image. It doesn't alter the image. You can't, InDesign cannot alter the image, but it was, is a uh, part of the image that doesn't con really contain anything like the sky or the background. It would uh -huh. use principles of design and move it into, it's a little uh, explanation I got from Adobe that does not really explain the algorithms that they are using. And I think they might be very complicated. Okay. Uh, they, they say they might actually utilize like part of an image that you, you might want to crop out, but then we'll want to use that space. They will not add uh, empty areas inside the frame at least they're not supposed to, because that will normally look bad, right? Okay. So, so um, I, I, that's the only way I interpret it, but it's a, it is a good question. So, um, yeah, because it sounded strange that, yeah, because it sounded strange that it would add negative space or something like that. Yeah, that's something you can do in Photoshop, and then you have to do it, you know, 
as on purpose like when we call it reverse cropping you mm -hmm. know you extend an image in one or several directions that's that's not what we're talking about here um in that case they will have to start altering the pixels in the image and and indesign will probably never do that all you can do you can alt double click and you will open the picture in photoshop so why would you you know it's not, yeah, or you can just uh, click on it here and do edit original. You know, edit original, it will open the picture in Photoshop. Which is why, by the way, why we will normally use PSD files when we work files where you can keep the layers and you can keep the adjustment layers and, and the masks and everything and you place them directly into the layout without any conversion to TIFF or EPS or uh, JPEG or anything like that, you know. The, all these pictures are JPEG if, for, to benefit the upload process. But uh, if, you, if I do here, do edit original as a JPEG, it will just open in Windows Preview. You know, if I do uh, edit with, I can do edit with uh, Photoshop, but it will still be the JPEG. And um, you don't want that. You want all the layers and all the information in the Photoshop so you can update that directly. And when you save it in Photoshop, they will update directly back into the layout. And they, the, it's like Photoshop and InDesign are plugging into each other, like one program. It's awesome. All right. So when you save this file, it will be a what kind of file? When, when, you, save, when you save this particular file that you worked on? This is an InDesign file. Mm -hmm. And so will this have all the layers? Yes, and then. Oh yeah. Uh, well, I, 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 when I was talking about layers, now I actually meant the, um, I actually meant the, um, um, the Photoshop image, you know, that 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 you use in your layout. But of course, yeah, uh, the layers I've been using, uh, everything here will be intact. You know, everything. Uh, the, the file I shared with you is the original file that I, I started out with. So everything will be in there um, the way it was. And, uh, and everything is there and all of my pictures are there. So please don't publish them, but you can use them for uh, training. And um, where's my folder? I'm looking for something. Uh, oh, I meant that when you save this file, you want to save this InDesign file um, with, the, with InDesign layers, uh, if you will. That, that, yeah, they will always be saved. As long as you save uh, an InDesign file, um, where is it here? See, this is my presentation. It's called prs onemd As in this a native document, and it will contain everything except the pixels for the images. Folder called links, and they will just link to them. You know. So yeah, an InDesign file can can be fairly lightweight because. All the uh, all the media files are like kept external. 